Hey, it's Michael. Welcome back to my series on Primavera P6 settings. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to try to cover all of the relevant Primavera P6 settings and I'm going to teach you what they do. And not only that, give you my recommendations on how to set them. So in a previous video, we covered these settings here. Let's go edit menu down to user preferences. And we covered many of the settings here on the time units tab in user preferences. Now let's go to the next tab. In this video, we're going to cover the dates settings. I'm going to tell you what they do and explain my recommendations to you. Okay. On the dates tab, you're going to find a whole bunch of settings, basically three little boxes. And I want to bring your attention right to the bottom right away, because there we can see a sample of a date and how it's going to change as I change the settings. So we can get a preview, see what things are going to look like. In this date format, we have the option of setting the order of month, year, and day. The standard option that we, or the default option is really the middle one here, day, month, year. And I believe that's more the American system, but it seems to be what most people stick with anyways. Personally, I've always liked year, month, day, but that's just me, I'm a little crazy. I do tend to stick with the default just because everyone else does and I'm a, you know, one of those goat people. I just follow along where everyone else goes. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here, but if you did want to change it, you could see the effects down at the bottom. On the right-hand side under options, we have a couple things I want to bring your attention to. Number one, we have the four-digit year. Well, we passed Y2K a long time ago, but I still like to see a four-digit year. And I'm going to tell you why you want to set four digit year on. It's because if you plan to work with Excel and exporting dates to Excel, Excel often misunderstands which two digit number is the day or the year. So to make it absolutely clear and not to get your dates mucked up when you're exporting to Excel, set on the four digit year. I also like to turn on month name and you can have the month as a number or as a name, but I like to have it as a name and I believe that's a default as well. Okay, so we have leading zeros as well. So if we have day, you know, the 3rd of August, it will put a leading zero so that it's always two digits. These are the kind of the standards that I like. Now I'm gonna draw your attention down to the bottom, the time area. And we're not gonna set the time area in our default everyday planning, but this is an option that I come back to a lot and I turn it on and turn it off and turn it on. And I'm going to show you what I do. In the course of analyzing a schedule or building a schedule, I often will come in and turn on the 12 hour option here when I'm analyzing start and finish dates. Okay. Specifically when I'm building a schedule or working with calendars and tweaking calendars and things, I'll turn this on. So, as you can see in the sample area, it puts a clock value on a date. So we now have not only the start date, but we have the start time or the finish time. Okay, so let's close here and go into my project and I'll just show you what this helps me with. So here's a really simple project that I put together and have a look at the time field. We have all different hours of start times and different hours of finish times. Now, I actually designed this project with that in mind, but typically in the process of building a schedule, we don't want to see every activity starting at a different time of day. So we often have to turn that option on to, to, to see if we can analyze that the activities are starting every day at 8 a.m. and finishing every day, say, at 4 p.m., depending on your, how your calendar is set. So that is how I use that clock field or the time setting here on the dates tab. So by default, I like to have that set to do not show time because I don't want to be, I don't want to be inundated with that data, but I often turn it on and off. Those are my recommendations for you and a little bit of understanding about these fields. If you're a beginner, you definitely want to set these things in your user preferences so they're set and they'll be preserved as you go along. I'll see you in another P6 settings video. I'm Michael from Plan Academy. Happy planning. If you want to learn more about P6 settings and how to use P6 to manage projects, please check out some of our courses. We have an advanced course. We have a foundations course, and they would be perfect for you to get your P6 certificate 
and become a master at Primavera P6.